Okay, we pick it up here. <clears throat> up to now, you have gone through the entire process to make a corridor. Such a process was to start correctly, making sure that all the settings were correct by using a couple of visual checks, beginning with a named template, hopefully the DOT template, creating a surface, and we'll be doing that in a number of ways, but creating a surface in this case was just by taking five or six 3D lines, but also having a cadastral map at zero, zero. Creating a horizontal alignment. Creating an existing surface profile. Creating a profile view and putting it at the correct spot on the design plane. Creating an assembly. And then creating a corridor by selecting by name and not by grabbing since they're all over the map at this point a horizontal proposed horizontal alignment a profile drawing which you to which you had already added a proposed profile and the assembly and that from that point you build a cor you built a corridor so that's what we're at sitting at right now let's get to that point and now let's refine our corridor a little bit by adding a couple of different assemblies along the way but mostly for this one by just breaking up and adding a null assembly we'll call it a null assembly which has nothing really in it uh, through the intersection so we're gonna go here we're gonna file and open of course where we left off again looking for those font files we'll have to fix those up pretty quick here alright so we have if you remember a couple of things and right there I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these paths I'm gonna erase that click right click I guess I can't just do that I had to delete E for erase click E for erase and I'm gonna to go to the south north corridor by selecting on it I could have also gone here to tool space I'm gonna turn off the map pane here and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to want to actually redefine some regions within my corridor. And if we think about the intersection being at 3640, we might want to take 200 feet on either side for that one. And the intersection there, I think we lost the label for that one. The intersection there was about 90, 95. 9540 so we're gonna go from 9240 to 9740 on that we're going to go ahead and make a null assembly make a region from 90 I'm sorry 9340 to 9740 and we're gonna just do that right now how do we do that well we collect select the corridor and we go to corridor properties here See all this information that's in there for that corridor, lots of information we're going to be using. Specifically later we'll be using surfaces, but we're going to go here to parameters and we realize here we've got basically each one of these is a region. So we have one baseline defined and then we have one region. Well we can click on that region and right click and we can split the region up. So we're going to split the region up. We said that we're going to go from 93. We can just type in 9340. I would really have you start to learn to use uh, know your stationing and do it that way. 9340. And we're going to do another one. 93, we're going to go 497.40. And we have done that. You'll get this error. That's okay. I don't know why they think we're going to have stationing at zero, zero, but we now have a, um, <clears throat> one extra re or two extra regions. The region number two and number four are going to stay the same, and this one is going to change. So we're going to need to change the assembly. Well, we don't have an assembly yet, so we're just going to hit OK here. We'll hit Apply. When we're defining assemblies, remember we want to put them down near the zero, zero point on our drafting plane. So we're going to just remember we have made, and you see there, eh, we probably should have gone a little bit, a little bit more. 
on that one there, but we'll survive for now. All right, you can see those grips right there to find the edges of the region. We're now going to go down V for view and hop all the way down to assembly one, set current. Okay, jump way down here, and we're going to now define a new assembly, not at zero, zero, but we'll just make it 20 feet higher. So we're going to make it at zero comma 20. We'll go ahead and define an assembly. We're going to create an assembly, and we're going to call this assembly assembly null. And null is a great descriptor. It means really it doesn't really have much data in there. We're going to hit OK here. And we're going to put it at 0, 20. Right, so we're stacking them up. There it is. And eventually we'll start labeling these things out. So we've got our null assembly right there, asked underscore null. We can now go back, view, back to overall, set current kind of keeps us in, in mind here. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to, once again, we're going to click on here and we could just change the edit the region, but it's nice a nice idea to go back to the corridor properties and do it there. Right here, instead of, for the second region, instead of using the south-north assembly one, we're going to just select the assembly null, the null assembly. Apply. And you'll see now we've got a break in our alignment. We're going to do it again. This time we'll do it from 34 plus 00, zero to 40 plus 00. zero. Let's try it. We're going to do it here. We're going to click on this one. So we hit escape, escape, escape. Select our region. I guess it will go from 34 to 39. 34 to 39, so we're going to go to Corridor Properties, go to our first region, right click, Split Region. You see we're going to go somewhere around there. Get used to just typing in 3400, and then another region, let's say somewhere around 3900. Don't just arbitrarily pick, you'll get the same error. This time, since we've already assembled, we've already done that assembly here, we can go to here, change the assembly to null, hit OK, hit Apply. OK. Now, so what you see here is we've now more or less gapped out. We've more or less gapped out what our, where our intersection would be. And one of the steps we'll be doing in the near future is to use the intersection um, wizard, I guess it would be called. But we already have a local expert in class that's working on a roundabout. So he'll have it all figured out by then, and we'll just be able to kind of uh, learn from him. Uh, but we have gone through now, and we've actually gone and made, even though it looks we've got four different regions, or six different regions, we will be adding more regions than that. As you get to changes in your design, typical cross-section along any particular stretch of road, that gets defined as a region. I will note, however, that if the fundamental change is just a widening or, an on, or a, a, a thinning or anything like that, you do not necessarily have to change the region. I would recommend in the short term that that's how you go about changing the general cross-section of your road, just by defining a bunch of different assemblies. Um, and, and working from there. Uh, one of the next steps we're going to have here, and it's going to be not problematic, but we'll do it, uh, is going to be to next make a 3D surface, a surface from the corridor, uh, and that'll be some fits and starts. So I'll have some of you who are working out ahead figure that out. Uh, I've done the same here. Um, but what you want to do now is go through some of your designs and set up multiple regions and multiple um, assemblies. The most obvious place in any typical road um, that you might be designing to do a, a separate cross-section might be at it towards an intersection. So think about that. Um, and that's 10 minutes, how to go to split uh, a corridor into separate regions. Thanks for listening.